Hey, my name's Matt Campbell. Uh, my brother Jeff was murdered on September 11th, 2001. He was 31. He worked for Reuters and was due to attend the Wristwaters Conference on the 106th floor of the North Tower of the World Trade Center. I still have a copy of the last email he sent that morning at 8.02 a.m. saying that he was running late for the Waters Conference. Although the events of 9-11 were 12 years ago, as a family we still obviously grieve for him, and 9-11 will always be relevant to us. In addition to the constant references in the media, we also get formal reminders. As recent as June 5th this year, we were informed by our police liaison officer um, yet, a, yet another body part has been identified and um, it had actually been recovered in December 2001 along with other uh, body parts of him. Um, and in January this year, the adjourned from July 2004 coroner's inquest um, was finally held into my brother's death. Um, no one from my family actually attended, although my mum did receive notification on the phone of uh, the key findings. But we did eventually receive the formal inquisition form which cites the time, place and circumstance at or in which injury was sustained, and I'll quote from it. At 8.46 on 11th of September 2001, the deceased was on the 106th floor of North Tower of World Trade Center when an aircraft, AA-11, was deliberately flown into the building, causing its collapse at 10.28. This event was part of a coordinated attack by the Islamist militant group, Al-Qaeda. As I reread that statement now, I mean, the memories have come flooding back of me spending the best part of the last decade going down the rabbit hole into the myriad of 9-11 conspiracy theories, starting, of course, with the official one. And like many, I've spent far too, much, far too much time on the internet searching for the truth, safely at my keyboard and screen. My wife would often say, what's the point of knowing all this stuff? What are you going to do about it? Uh, comment. As fate would have it, I stumbled across an article, um, it was either on the TAP blogspot, if you're familiar with that, um, or a global research email, I can't remember, about a forthcoming historical court case um, in Horsham, in Sussex, where I live, right in Sussex. Um, and the title was, Historic Court Hearings, the BBC in the dock for manipulating evidence and providing biased coverage of the September 11, 2001 attacks. It obviously piqued my interest, so I thought to myself, enough is enough, time to take some action. And so on the 25th of February this year, I found myself actually inside the courtroom, watching Tony Rook argue his case against the BBC, citing um, Section 15, Article 3 of the Terrorism Act 2000, for not paying his TV licence. Or should I say, he was trying to argue his case. Um, the judge wouldn't or couldn't let him actually show the evidence as it was a strict liability um, trial. However, the fact that the district judge had actually allocated some two or three hours um, for a strict liability case, because he'd actually seen and looked at the quality and quantity of evidence uh, pre-trial, speaks volumes. I had a brief chat with Tony in the pub afterwards, after his moral victory. Um, he's got a conditional discharge and uh, no fine. And a couple of months later, I attended my first reinvestigate 9 11 meeting at Conway Hall. I met a few of you there. Um, one of the problems I see getting the 9 11 reinvestigated and obtaining the necessary support from the public is there are so many conspiracy theories out there. And of course, the mainstream media, um, like the BBC, have helped brand many truthers as crazy people. And to be fair, some theories are crazy. My favourite one is that my brother and his photo and images of him was a software construct. Not true. Um, some seem more based on tenuous speculation rather than hard facts, which even if they are true, is extremely hard to prove in a court of law. So you end up going round and round in circles, which was pretty much what I did for 10 years. Um, there are so many reasons why I want 9-11 reinvestigated. And the main reason that I've decided to go public with my support is because of Building 7 and the support of physics. The symmetrical free-fall evidence is incontrovertible. Building 7 was not brought down, by, brought down by office fires. It had to be done by some sort of a controlled demolition, which must cast, to use a rethink 9-11 phrase, serious doubt on the official account of 
obviously then some. So on 3rd of June this year, I found myself in an hour's meeting at Chichester Police Station with District Commander Tanya Jones, along with Tony Rook, Adrian Mallett, Ian Henshaw, showing her a video of Building 7 collapsing, along with evidence of previous false flag precedents, such as Project Northwoods in Gladio. At one point, Tanya asked, almost rhetorically, what do you expect me to do about this? Your job, Mr Rook replied. At a minimum, the BBC and Reuters should be investigated under Section 38B of the Terrorism Act for its prescient report by some 23 minutes of Building 7's collapse. Anyway, that meeting was over three months ago, and by a shameful letter on the 10th of July saying Miss Jones was away on annual leave, I've heard nothing from her, despite le several letters to both Chichester Police Station and the Sussex Police Commissioner, who washed their hands of it, saying that it's, a, it's an operational matter. There were 67 British victims murdered on 9-11. Our police force is guilty of not investigating a pretty big crime. What the hell do we pay them for? All of us should go down to our local police station, if not today, tomorrow, and report a crime. And then there's the BBC and their shameful failure to inform the British public of the monumental scientific significance of Building 7 and its symmetrical freefall collapse. What the hell do we pay them for? Accurate and impartial news? I don't think so. The implications of Building 7's collapse are huge. Yesterday I attended the September 11th memorial service in um, Um, attending the memorial service in Grosvenor Square Gardens near the US Embassy. The number of family members that um, is, is still as strong as it was when the garden was first opened on September 11th, 2003. For many, the grief is uh, very strong, very evident. I mean, children who lost their parents when they were young are now as you know, becoming young adults and now reading out their father or their mother's name and trying to hold it together, as I am, and failing to do so. Um, I haven't spoken to anyone in the September 11 UK support group about rethinking or reinvestigating 9-11 yet. It's hard enough trying to do that with your members of your own extended family. However, Building 7 is making that easier. My mother wants 9-11 reinvestigated and wants the truth to come out. She reads out Jeff's name every year at the uh, memorial service. She's unbelievably strong. I vividly remember the day we received some more of Jeff's remains. This was back in 2008. It was his scalp with hair attached to his skin. The soft tissue in his left ear, his eye socket and his eyebrow, along with some of his right jaw and three teeth. No one, let alone a mother, should have to witness and experience that. And yet it continues the false flags, the illegal wars. Um, sorry. Uh, my heart goes out to Bob McIlvain, whose son Bobby was murdered on 9-11. I know he's been very active in 9-11, truth. And personally, as one family member of a 9-11 victim to another, I want to thank him for his relentless efforts. I know Fran has a, rec a recorded interview with him that's going to be shown later on today. My mother and I want 9-11 reinvestigated. Building 7 was not brought down by office fires, and 9-11 has been used for the basis of the war on terrorism, the continuing deaths of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of innocent people, and the continuing erosion of our civil liberties. How far down the road do you and your family want to go? Enough is enough. We need to know the whole truth. Thanks. It was, um, it was a UK coroner. Um, as far as I know, it was adjourned because it was, there was more than one body and there was like five or six people. And for whatever reason, they adjourned it for six, seven years. Uh, that, that's gone. I don't think there's anything we either could have done um, because it's, I, I don't really understand the public. Uh, sorry, it's an inquest um, done. It's, it's been done actually back in January. Um, 
I mean, my mother knew it was happening, but didn't want to attend. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, you asked a question. I hope it wasn't rhetorical. Um, saying, who do we pay uh, for the BBC? And I think we all know who we pay. Well, I don't, because I don't pay anything. But those who do, we pay the scum, which is has risen to the top as it does in nature and should be blown away, should have been blown away a long time ago. Patton and the last um, chairman, who we just see the theatre on the public mm -hmm. networks about their hand in pocket, pocket lining criminality at that level. These people are sick. Uh, the 5%, the 1%, 0.1% are pathogens of our species. And we've got to get rid of them. Not not kill them necessarily, but put them out of. Uh, yeah, I mean, what's I'm, the word? I'm not I'm not paying my TV license, um, uh, and I've written several letters of trying to bring the, bring on the court case. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I think if everybody in this room didn't pay their TV license and went to court, that would. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm, I'm trying to get um, some. Something in writing other than she's on holiday from the uh, police um, woman, so that that can then support action for withholding a proportionate amount of your council tax for the same reason. Yes? Uh, how many citizens from the United Kingdom were killed in 9 11? Uh, 60, 67. And has there been interest held in the, uh, all of the cases? I, I wouldn't know. I, I don't uh, know. Be because there, there has been a ruling uh, just a month ago. Uh, in the European Court of Human Rights in relation to inquests. And uh, I'm chairman of the Irish Civil Rights Association, and uh, we got two cases, two people from the occupied part of Ireland to pursue. There has been no, in the SAS killed about 41 people in the occupied part of Ireland, and still no inquest has been held, some of them 24 years on. So two citizens of Ireland from the occupied part of Ireland took the case to the European Court. And the European Court has awarded them costs because the uh, inquest have not been held. And they have more or less ordered that the inquest into the other cases be held. I've got details of it here in my conference if I can give it to you. But the whole press here in the United Kingdom, the television, the radio, and even in Ireland, to suppress the whole thing. But it is, if you check, it's a ruling of the European Court of Human Rights in relation to inquest. Tony Rook on a, a film called Incontrovertible and it's, it's basically uh, the evidence um, within a documentary that was going to be presented at the court case um, that he wants to basically show an interview um, a jury of 12 retired um, police officers, retired clergy etc. I mean, your point about the, the legal profession is extremely hard I think for people who are actively working with a lot of stuff to lose to actually, you know, stand up and be counted, um, because they have got a lot to lose, um, uh, you know, in terms of their jobs and their livelihood and, and friends, and perhaps don't agree with their views. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the, 
the point of the film is to actually aim it at retired police officers so that you know, if we can get some higher ranking ones to, to agree with the evidence to then present that um, to active police officers and clergy, etc. Anyway. Did I see a question from Peter Neathy? No, you didn't. <laughs> no? No. Somebody over there. It's me. Hi there. Um, just to say, I was uh, leafleting for this event and uh, Peter's play uh, at the Desi uh, Arms Fair at London XL last weekend. And uh, I got chatting to that. I was, no one was at one end leafleting where there was lots of protesters, and I was at the other end leafleting where there weren't very many protesters but lots and lots of police. And I got chatting to three different groups of policemen, and there were about eight, eight policemen in each group. And I, I was just talking to them about 9 11 and giving them the leaflets. And they all knew, every single, not every single one, but almost every single one, knew what was going on. You know, they, 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 they've all heard the conspiracies, they've all looked into it, and they all kind of have questions about it. To the point where one guy, one of the policemen, um, said to me, uh, Oh, have you ever heard of a guy called Danny Jenko or something like that? And I said, Oh, Danny Jenko, the, uh, the Dutch, um, the Dutch uh, demolition expert. And he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, and he rushed into the police van and he brought out a magazine. And, and, and this magazine was about, about unsolved mysteries. And there was a big, there was a big sort of five-page spread about uh, all the people that have died surrounding 9-11. And, and this guy pulled it out and spread it out on the, on the bonnet of his van. And, and all the other coppers were all, all, all around and they're all agreeing with it. So, you know, I've, I've been doing this for about five years. And... and and the public and the police, you know, the, the, the way the, uh, the consciousness has changed about this is, is very, very amazing and very encouraging, really. And uh, so we are winning in a little way, I think. We're getting there slowly. <laughs>